I like opening with a woo. That's a good way to start a show. Yep, and we're live right <laughs> now. We uh, we're actually live a little bit early. Yeah, we were in place. Uh, Scott is in place with Ken, uh, the head tour guide yeah. from Tomatin. But go, I guess you guys go ahead introduce yourself, please. Yes, yeah, Scott. I'm Ken. Yeah. So. <laughs> Some of you might have seen uh, the last stream we did about a year and a half ago that I joined in on, and now we have Ken, who's our senior tour guide here at Tomatin as well. So good evening from Scotland. Yeah, hi. Well, and we had, I got a couple of comments yesterday. I just did a quick little 30 second video announcing today's live stream. And I said, Scott will be joining us from mm -hmm. Tomatin Distillery. And they were like, which Scott? Well, they, they, think no, you? they thought it was me. They oh, thought wow. I was in Scotland. I'm like, no, All right. another Scott. Coming. There are too many Scots on the planet. There are. There are, too many <laughs> as well, yeah. so, um, there are not a lot of Barts, though, baby. Not a lot of Barts. No. Well, funnily enough, our Cooper is Alan Bartlett, and we call him Bart. So there's a Bart at Tomatin as well. When we visit, at some point, we surely will. Bart and Bart will get a picture together. Definitely. Definitely. You now both tend to wear hats as well, so that'll be pretty good. Perfect. Now your background scene looks wonderful. So please explain a little bit of what's going on where you're at. Yeah. So we're in the visitor center here at Tomatin. Um, and currently we offer three different tours and the top end tour that we do is the single cask experience. And what we do there is take, um, take tourists, customers around the distillery for about two hours and then sit down and taste a range of different casks that are not available. They just sort of explore the various flavors that we use when we're making our products. And what we have behind us is five single casks that are only available at the visitor center. And uh, you can come and make your own bottle, label it up and take it home. You have to fill a bottle with eat with one, like the whole bottle is from the one cask. Yeah, you don't get There's to do a blend. so many people that come here and think it's pick and mix. <laughs> They're blending their own. Now I've got I can see taps there and then it looks like names on the individual casts. Yeah, That's these right. are the, the, the barrels that it's stored in outside. So we have another Rosso Sherry cask. And the whiskey in here is about 12 years exclusively in the Nola Rosso Sherry cask. We Let's just about, stop there because there's no need to go past yeah, the old Rosso. You've just <laughs> basically <laughs> talking. Yeah, this is his dream talk that's going on right there. There you go. This one's interesting because this is virgin American oak. Uh, so it's American oak, but it comes from Spain, I think. So the oak comes from Spain, America to Spain, and then they make it into barrels, and then we get the barrels, I think, if I've got that right. So it's virgin yeah. American oak. And then an experiment cask. So we've got to thank you for providing these for us. And uh, 1990 experiment cask has 27 years in the bourbon cask. Mm -hmm. it's sherry, similar to that one, but different. Beautiful. So a twenty that's a twenty-seven year old ex bourbon. That's twenty seven right. years in the bourbon cask. From nineteen ninety. So it was originally planned that this would be a twenty five year old whiskey, but obviously that age of whiskey is kind of expensive. Not everyone buys it. So it's, it's oh. not got for three years. But it's, it's very, very fun whiskey. Yeah. They're all very fun whiskeys. Oh, so what 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 is the price difference then? You're there at the at the visitor center and you has got the price list. I have the price list actually. I just checked. I've got it right. So bourbon cask, seventy pounds. What's that in dollars? Hundred. No, it's ninety. Yeah, probably. Ninety dollars, right? Yeah. So seventy pounds, seventy five for the Virgin Oak, eighty for the Oloroso, ninety five for the Pedro Jimenez, and two hundred seventy five for that one. How much? Two seventy five. Two seventy five. Wow, that's yeah, quite a quite a good jump there. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. And we have a sample of that. Yes. So let's explain that on our side. Um, um, first of all, uh, we had both heard that. Uh, I, well, I'd even heard first on Mark Gillespie's show that uh, your your visitor center was just exploding with visitors that were coming in. I think you guys had a massive increase. It's just been extremely popular people are flooding in so talk to us a little bit about that and kind of i know i know you mentioned you have like three different tours and but can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah so we've been running tours at the distillery for a long time now probably since the 90s you know as ken was saying there uh, the building that we're in right now used to be the head offices for the distillery 
But uh, as we built the new office over the road that we streamed from last time, we started using this as a, a visitor experience. Now, the numbers have never been as high as they were before. When I joined the company in 2012, I think we hit about 20,000 visitors and we had three members of staff and a fourth one in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, last year, we hit 50,000 visitors and this summer we've had 18 members of staff. So it's wow, it's really taken off. There's in 14 members of staff virtually all year round yeah. and a few extra um, uh, students come, come in the summer to kind of help it out. But uh, yeah, we've 35,000 visitors two years ago, rising to 50,000 last year. And the only problem is, well, not a problem really, but they don't all come. They don't all come regularly. Fifty thousand visitors divided by fifty-two weeks—that's great, thousand a week. But we maybe only get a couple of, uh, maybe a hundred or so in a week in the winter, which means we've got you know two, three thousand people passing through here in in, a, in the height of the summer. And we've had thirty-six thousand people so far this year, and we've still got. And you just hit something amazing. You said students, so I would imagine over the summer, some kid wants a little extra job, and he he hits the jackpot of coming to Europe. Yeah. It's pretty good as well. It ties back into, we talked about it the last time, um, people from the local area that work on site. It tends to be students that have come back up from Edinburgh and Glasgow. They've maybe grown up in Tamatan, and we take them to work in the visitor center here. So that's a great thing as well, tapping into their local knowledge. And quite wow. useful, they do, they do courses that are useful to us. One, one chap we had this year who uh, speaks three or four different languages, so that's obviously really helpful. And uh, one of our students who's done uh, a degree in chemistry, biochemistry, so she knows all about all the, all the stuff that's happening out there and can explain it to us in more simple languages so that I can understand it and tell other people about it. Wow. Our Brilliant. turnover last year, which I always find really amazing, the, tur the turnover was over one million pounds last year. Wow. And if you put it in the context of this being quite a small shop in the middle of nowhere, the mm -hmm. only self. <laughs> yeah. That's that's not bad. And we have to do a little recognition. We had a that super chat phenomenal. come in. I was trying oh, to yeah. find my cowbell. Woo, cowbell. We do that when we get a super chat. Yeah, super Mose, chats. Mo's Mo came, came in, in with a fifteen dollar donation. Yes, yeah, so we jump in with that little cowbell. There, we got a lot of comments coming in. We're going to talk about this box in a second. More stuff on the distillery and the tours. Did you have any comments that you wanted to tag? I on? haven't even. I know. I haven't been able to keep up with them honestly. Wow. So I apologize. We'll try to if you uh, highlight us or send the question to us. If you get something, we'll try to address what we can. A whiskey throttle right there. He just bought a, a new 25-year-old Tomatin that was mm. one of 268 bottles. And we have the uh, Dualcus right here that That's we're what, sampling. Uh, so we were warming our palate up. Yes. With. Always a good way to start with the Dualcus. It's the, it's the breakfast whiskey if you want. I um, like the way you talk. Hey, hey uh, Scott, <laughs> why don't you start? Just give us your uh, work history here with Tomatin, how long you've been there current role and then Ken oh, the yeah. same way same way if you could just give us a brief bio love it yeah so I started with the company in 2012 as an intern from university I was studying Scottish history and joined the company to research their history and then uh, over the space of a year moved into the commercial side of the business and for about four years looked after the company's sales to Europe and then in the middle of last year, I went away to White and Mackay for a year, worked there for a year, looking after um, sort of Eastern Europe and the Middle East sometimes markets. So I was looking after places like Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Israel, uh, and then was uh, delighted to come back to Tamatin as their global brands ambassador. So I am now doing much more uh, consumer focused um, events, going out to markets, training tastings, and then uh, when I'm on site, I'm working alongside our distillery manager in um, selecting the casks that we're using and pulling together some pro uh, some casks for our limited releases at the moment. So I uh, get to have a much more creative role in the whiskey itself now. So Wonderful. Ken? Yeah, Ken. Uh, my history, I was a radio presenter before I worked here. 25 years in local radio and got a bit fed up with that and it turned out that the only transferable skill I had having done two or three outside broadcasts from distilleries was that I knew quite a bit about whiskey and uh, I'm quite quite good at talking to people 
And so I started here in 2015. And I mean, and, and the time's gone by so quickly. It's three, it's three and a bit years now. I get to the point where I can actually say I'm in my fourth year. So that just seems unbelievable. And, uh, and in that time, just been doing lots and lots of tours around the distillery. You would think, actually, if you're doing the same tour three or four times a day for four years, you would get fed up. But I don't. Every single tour is different. All of the people that come here, what the terrific thing about working at a distillery or anywhere like this, I suppose, is that every single person who comes here is on holiday. And everyone who comes here, bar one or two kind of sulky teenagers, is here because they want to be here. And so you're just meeting people that are here having a good time and you get to have a good time with them. So next best thing to being on holiday yourself for four years is chatting to other people who are on holiday and giving them the chat about the area and talking about the whiskey. And tomato is such, it is, it is a really good product. There's so many people that come here who, they've, they've found the whiskey because it's, it's not actually that easy to find, is it? I mean, and then, no, you know, it's, right. it, you, you seek it out, you find it. There's a lot of people that are really enthusiastic about it and it's a slightly kind of secret thing. And they come here and they're all very enthusiastic. But equally, there's a tremendous number of people who come here that have never heard of us before and they're really very pleasantly surprised. Mm. I don't know how they get here, given that they've never heard of us before. <laughs> but uh, we're very, very close to the main road. And uh, you're only 20 miles from Inverness and about the same difference from Aviemore in the, in the south. So if you're coming on a skiing holiday, make sure you come to Tamatan and uh, pop in over the winter period. Tell them Ken sent you tap the side of your nose and uh, we'll do a wee special deal. <laughs> oh, I like that. So you got a little tip. That's like a little secret That's code. That's insider. Yep. Yeah, you're the insider. Hold on. We got some stuff. Two, More cow two cowbells. Uh, Travis H. Right. Uh, with a super chat and whiskey in the six. Rob, yeah, was there. Uh, Rob from Canada is in. Loves, he says, loves me some tomatin, especially the 14 port. Ooh, that is a good the 14's one. good. That's one of so, my favorites, too. We had to, maybe the chat from Canada can help. We had some people in uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we got the the um, five virtues that you probably heard of, the whiskies that were designed to sort of complement five. Oh, I've got to hold it up, haven't I? Uh, some artwork. The five elements of life in, uh, in Asian culture are earth, water, wood, fire, metal. That's what we are. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, these have all sold out absolutely everywhere. But one chap who came in said that there was a shop in Canada that still had a couple of them. But Canada's a huge place. Yeah, so if, yeah. if anybody in Canada can help us narrow that down a little bit. Yes. Um, yeah. I know those, uh, those did not come into the States. No. So. No, that's oh, right. That's it? right. No, no, oh, that was sorry. Uh, that was a bit floating there. Like, yeah. yeah with, oh, I was all right. <laughs> All right. Well, what, what do you want to get started with? You think maybe the virgin oak or ex bourbon? What do you want to start? Yeah, walk us through. Let's start with the. We can go two ways. We can go either the way the casks are used or intensity and flavor. I would start with the ex bourbon and let's go from there. Okay, let's do it. We got brand new glasses. Now something you you pour us that glass from the cask as well. So that's that's uh -oh. ten for us. Hold hold on, just uh, let's uh, lock it on you guys yep. because. While we're pouring our sample, Ken right there is just going right from the tap. Right. Yeah. Those are cast strength, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So the, the drums that you have there, they're cast strength as well. Beautiful. <laughs> now, one thing we talked about, we have this, uh, you'd mentioned this display case, uh, the samples that came to us. And currently, this is what your ambassadors use or some of your, your products that you'll send out to folks like us for reviewers. But there is discussion that they may end up being available for sale if somebody comes through. So that's, they're not available yet, but it's something that may happen, right? That's right. We, we developed these about two months ago. Um, so I, I guess if there's enough demand for it, there's a possibility that that would be something that could become available um, for tours. So it's a great way to try different whiskeys. And we now have a, a small bar at the distillery here where you can buy tokens and try whiskeys that you wouldn't get to try on the tour. So some limited releases. We've got some bottlings from, um, well, there's a bottle of blend from the 1980s there as well. So you can try things that you wouldn't necessarily otherwise get to try. See, I think that's a brilliant idea. I think that is, uh, you know, because I, I, some people are going to grab a full bottle, but being able to sample is wonderful. I was going to show Bart something that uh, he doesn't know about yet. Oh, what? I like when I don't know something. <laughs> oh, what? What? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! Like now, we have underneath. So on top, we've got samples of the ex bourbon. We've got the virgin oak, the oloroso sherry, and then the PX sherry. 
underneath is the 27 year old bourbon. Uh, I don't know what that is. Alton the Frith. Yeah, that's the water from our water source. So, Ooh, well, should we you should use that in your gram instead of your mineral water? You can do that as well. Yeah, we sure. should use that. Yeah, we'll use that to drop. And in. then there's some of your malted barley and your new make spirit is yeah, underneath yeah. there as well. Don't get the water from the Alton the Frith and the new make spirit mixed up. Yeah, <laughs> good call there. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be like, so if, if you want, you can try the new mix spirit as well. That's around about 70% alcohol. So a, a, a different taste and experience altogether, but a great place to start. Beautiful. I, I nosed it. Definitely smells like water. We're going right in. It smells in. like water. Ah, yes. Water has a smell. <laughs> it does. I agree with you. Water smells like the white of an egg when you're making um, uh, meringue. There you go. And I've even had some water in the states that stink, just stinks. <laughs> yeah, don't drink the water in London. <laughs> oh, see, there you oh, go. People have already drank it before you. Yeah. All right, now lovely. Let's see what we got on the nose here. Ooh, nice. A lot of oak. Yeah, and vanillas. Yep. A little bit of cream. What is the, the ABV is not labeled on these. What are we looking at here? I know it's the cast strength. percent How much? 60.2. 60.2. 12 years old. Uh, no, 11 years 11 old. 11 years old. 11 years old this month in about two days. Well, that is very, very clean and crisp. So what we do with these casks here, the idea is um, on, so we've got three different tours. We've got the legacy tour, which is our basic tour, lasts around about an hour. And at the end of that, you'll try the Tomatin Legacy, 12 year old and Kubokan. Then we've got the Taste of Tomatin, which is a slightly longer tour with a, a, a taste of the full core range. And then what we're doing differently with a single cask experience tour is rather than showing you our end product, we're showing you the type of flavors that we'll use to create the end product. So, for example, the Tomat and Legacy would be a combination of the bourbon that we're trying now and the virgin oak that we'll try in a minute. Uh, the 12 year old is a combination of the bourbon and the sherry casks. So, it's, it's trying to show people how we get our flavors, the importance of the casks, and the influence that they will have on our products. And then having some fantastic single casks to share with people as well. Beautiful. I tell you, I just took a little sip. It does not feel like sixty percent at all, and it is—it's uh, just so full of, of flavor. Uh, it, I mean, it's it's bursting at the seams, literally. Mm. The cream, the vanilla, wow. the oak, the caramel. Yeah. You're right. Lots of uh, it's a very like caramel cream. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. And it's very, very rich, nice velvety mouth coating. I was gonna say thick and oily. Yeah, it's viscous. viscous. Yeah, that's it's got a long, long finish there as well. That that stays with you for quite some time. Like a touch of what we call cotton candy here. It's that spun sugar. Yeah, uh, candy floss. Candy floss. Ooh, what do you call it? candy floss? Candy floss. floss yeah, I was just having a discussion about that in the after. You can buy grapes that are candy floss flavored now in the UK. Mm. Wow. And shop, and shop, really? Describe them as cotton candy flavored. That's good. Yeah. See, because candy floss Wait. here is like a name of dancers. It's so <laughs> <Yeah. nice. laughs> that's I kept clean. I kept it very, very clean though. <laughs> is is uh, floss the middle name or the second name? <laughs> <laughs> also known as Scott's bathing suit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or not? He's, yeah, he's like a full German European. When he hits the beach, it's speedo all the way, baby. I think it's going to take a few more whiskeys before I'm ready to have that. Yeah. I'm, I'm German in heritage, long distant, but that's the joke. Sorry to any Germans that are that are this. Germans are bold when they hit the beach. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, not shy at all. Not at all. They just own it, baby. They own it. <laughs> now. We'll be quiet on that. No more offending Not of Germans. <laughs> you guys are going to get me fired again, We're right? Fired yeah. Anything. Yeah. Ken was very quiet. He was like, you know what? I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> 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 50,000 people are, are, are German visitors. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
German visitors are phenomenal. And they've got a good sense of humor. Very, very enthusiastic about the whiskey. And they this know a lot true. about the whiskey. Again, I'm Brun Sheen is my last name. I, hate, very to, I hate to bring us back to Sorry. the whiskey. Back to the whiskey away <laughs> from the German. When I was going to, this, uh, at the turn of 2017, we had uh, Joanne McGinnis on, yes. Whiskey Lassie. Mm -hmm. Her whiskey of the year was your, um, the, the ex bourbon cask to Matten from your visitor center. Perfect. That she was filled. That she had filled there. Now I don't know if it was. It's probably not the same cask. No, no. Uh, we've gone through quite a few casks right. already this year. Um, it'll be a very similar style, though. We're trying to keep it so that it's the same style because That's of like the these sort of things. You know, you'll get people that have tried it on their tour, go home, tell their friends, they come over and want to try it or buy something similar. So, but um, Joanne's coming back here, I believe, uh, towards the end of this month. Uh, so I'll be taking her out on tour as well. So beautiful. Yes, I remember no. that was a couple of years ago. She said she'd filled the cat the bottle herself. Well, it was, it was the the our New Year's Day show yes. for 2017. So at now, the beginning of the last I, year. I want to note a comment here. Uh our follower, he's been following us for a while here. McCallan Fine and Rare. He says he's German and he agrees with pretty much everything I've said. Perfect. We're off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We've we've gotten the, the agreement from a German. So we're that good. sounds like the majority have decided that they're with us. <laughs> right. They're bold. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, go I just get, well, again, back to the whiskey. Back to the whiskey, baby. I can Don't let me distract. I can see where this led Joanne to to have this in her top whiskeys or her top whiskey. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's this was seventy dollars or seventy or a pound, seventy, seventy five mm -hmm. pounds. That's I, I, nobody, nobody's going to be disappointed with that whiskey no, right there. No, phenomenal. Dan E. from Jersey is mm -hmm. making fun of us saying Kansas is hot tub. A uh, Kansas hot tub is a mud puddle. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> Dan E. is from Jersey, so he's all over us. I can't wait for Scott to bring us back to the whiskey again. <laughs> I'm just it, keeping the fans entertained. Baby. I will. Uh, <laughs> doesn't feel sixty percent at all. Literally, no. does. I've added a small drop of water, so Let I mean, maybe it's fifty-eight percent now. This is native at, water. At sixty percent, it just hides it so well. It's so it's soaked up so much of that cask. Apparently, in this time. Mm. This is what happens on, on single cask tours. People taste all the whiskeys and they think, oh, I don't, I don't, you don't, it doesn't feel like that strength at all. It's lovely, it's lovely, lovely. And then when you stand up after drinking five of them, <laughs> then you realize just how strong they were. Mm. <laughs> the gizmo you've got there for getting your drop of water. Yes. Is yeah. That from a Harry Potter Museum or something? No, almost. Almost. You know, tell them where it comes I, from. This is one of our deals here. Oh, yeah. Right, <laughs> it's got our logo. It's almost like that was planned that I would mention that. Almost, yes. We've got that's our logo burned in, and then uh, the glass is actually blowing. <laughs> that's still in there. Yeah, that's the angel from Angel Share. Yep. The Angel Share dropper set. Yeah, cool. Very nice. Definitely but not then, required. Just a nice fancy touch. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then the same. It's a newer logo that we're using. Uh, we call it Android. our Android head. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. Mm, that is delicious. Boy, yeah, very good indeed. And, and the now, fact that McAllen Fine and Rare points out I must not like Germans. I am German as well. <laughs> yeah. He My just, last name is Bruno. Right. He's Bruno. He just doesn't know where I'm going. Uh, he doesn't know where I'm going. Yeah, so he's, he's nervous. Scott's oh, nervous. Boy. Ken's in the radio. He's like, this this tall guy is a little bit off. He's a little off. <laughs> <laughs> with, your, with your microphone i'd probably shut you up by now <laughs> <laughs> yeah you would have killed it like this guy's son he's off the leash let's go to commercials <laughs> <laughs> yeah but right right after this commercial break a mm -hmm. uh, little cowbell for daniel whiskey throttle there little uh super chat from canada he, good, he says good show alberta still loves tomatin time for another tour of tastings oh yeah brilliant brilliant i love the cowbell that's a new touch Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. We were using a virtual cowbell and it just didn't have the same feel as a real cowbell. Didn't have the same ring to it. Right. <laughs> Can I say that again? Didn't have the same ring to it. Ah, <laughs> well done. <laughs> Woo! He gets a little cowbell bonus just for that. <laughs> <laughs> There's not going to be much of that cheese left. Mmm. 
Yeah, this is yeah, the other thing. Save, we got five samples yeah, to go. But you do put, you want to save some of it? You put food in front of me, and that's the problem. I just, it becomes like a foodie show. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go to the crisps. I'll go back to the crisps. <laughs> like he hasn't ate in two days. Yeah, when I come over to the Bruno house, it's feed time, baby. <laughs> and after five samples of cast strength, single barrel tomato, and we're going to be needing some snacks. We, we will need. Um. <laughs> delicious that was a uh, definitely worth it that's oh my wonderful. goodness yeah i'm like wow that's the starter beautiful yeah yeah uh virgin oak yeah well virgin oak. where do we go yeah. next scott um yeah so we're going to do the virgin oak now this is a uh, much younger whiskey i talked about it last time um we almost got laughed off there when we mentioned the tea bag effect that virgin oak has uh, so what we tend to find with virgin oak, you get a lot of flavor very, very early on. So with this one here, uh, I, I can yes. tell us in a minute, I believe it's around about five years old, but Maybe, much, yeah. a much darker whiskey than the bourbon cask. We don't have one of those ones bottled. I think it's four and a half, or it was actually going to be five this month or something. Okay, so it's around about five years old. 27th of September, 2013. It's five years old at the end of the month. Not really so young yeah um it was in the bottle did you say it was a, is it a french oak so what it is it's north american oak but it will have been coopered in spain so it will be casks that have been taken the wood will have been taken from north america over to the uh the cooperages in spain and that's where they would have made the casks and rather than filling sherry into it, they've sent it over to us and we've filled our whiskey into it. So it's North American oak. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm gonna that was getting the tissue. <laughs> <laughs> we're making sure we're clean for the nosing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we're going up to about 62.3% on this one. So it's slightly <laughs> higher in strength, but uh, there's a lot more flavor in there as well. So the strength again is going to be quite masked by a lot of the flavors there. And this is almost like a style of bourbon or rye on the nose there. You know, a lot of spices, a lot of American oak. Um, there's not been any bourbon in the cask to draw out some of the uh, heavy vanillins from the oak. So we're getting that straight into the whiskey very early on. Now, there is, there's a lot of maltiness going on here. A lot of, um, it just makes me smell like, a, it smells like a forest. Hmm. See, I get yeah. the maltiness, but I do get like a peppery rye, just like you described. Yeah. I think a little bit of the youth is showing in it on the nose, and it's strong as well. It, it, that one does jump out and get you a little bit more with the ABV. Yeah, that lets you know. What was the ABV again, Scott? 62.3. 62.3. This Scott had it too. I said it, and he's like, 62.3. <laughs> so we fill, we fill the casks at 63.5% here. Um, when the spirit comes off the stills, the average will be around about 70%. We'll water that down with water from the Alta 3 to 63.5 and fill the casks at that. So we've really not lost a lot of strength in the five years on this cask. Mm. Just nothing. Mm. I do love us just seeing you just seeing Ken go back there and just go right from the tap oh, on the cask like, is like a dream insane. job, yeah. Ken. I don't know how so, you survived there so many years. They would have got rid of me at two. I'm sure Scott and yeah. Ken probably do a live stream like every like six times a day. It's time oh, for another yeah. live stream. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So uh, the last time that we were on, you asked myself and Scott if we were to if the if the building was on fire, what bottle would we take away? Yes. The reason that we only picked one bottle is because we knew these were down here and we'd be okay. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, Ken would have, oh, cowbell, watch out. From Neil Olson. Thank you, Neil. I haven't seen you tune in before, yeah. actually. And his question or his statement is, keep up the good work, boys. I will be ordering some more swag shortly. Woo. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah, Ken, you would have. If I came on staff, I'd be gone in six months. You'd be like, this guy's damaging the profit model. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be gone in the first day. Just okay, for saying well, something that you should. Oh, I would be great. They would love me there. But yeah, then they'd be like, hold on, he's draining the cast. Get rid of him. What did he say about think... Germans? What did, What did he say? <laughs> we could probably pay you in whiskey. I reckon you'd be a pretty good yeah, tour guide. Uh, 
Yeah. Pay me in whiskey and put me up right in one of those homes that you have right there at the distillery. Boom. I'm never leaving. <laughs> That's the fear that we have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'd be like, he's not leaving. We were open. <laughs> this expert, this has more flavor than the 11 year ex bourbon cask. It does. Yeah, it does. It's very intense. Very intense. For a five year old scotch. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Mm. The color as well. You can't. Can you see it from there? Dark. Yeah. I can see it from here. You've got the, the bottle over there. Yeah. Now, and I think when you pour, like, uh, towards the end of the tour, show show the uh, visitors half a dozen bottles of whiskey and get them to put them in order of age. So this is this one we sneak in because you'll always get it wrong. You'll always put this <laughs> kind of, like number four out of the five because it's really really dark. Right. And, it's and picking we, up all those all those beautiful tannins coming right out of that virgin oak. And it's, then we reveal it's ta-da, it's the youngest. Wow. Yeah. yeah so, there, there, there's no way I would have thought that the flavor profile of this would have been stronger than the eleven year ex bourbon. So that's why, you know, we talk about the legacy as an entry level malt and it's quite a young whiskey, but it's full of flavor. And the reason is if you were to mix those two whiskeys that you just tried together. Not 50 50, it's more bourbon than it is virgin oak. You would get that legacy style of flavor coming through. So there's a lot of power going into that uh, whiskey at, at a, a youthful age. Dulcus. Dulcus, yeah. 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 Perfect. Dulcus. Yeah. Well, legacy, it's only Dulcus or Dulcus in the States. It's legacy yeah, everywhere else. Right. That's, yeah. Where did it go? We had it mm, out. Over here. Somehow yeah. it ended up on my side of the desk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now this is, and then, you know, we push it. We talk about it a lot for being a non-age statement, really kind of an entry level, uh, it, you know, it, around here, it's, I think it's $22, right. something like that. Unbelievably well-priced. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great, great whiskey. Mm. And it's a great, we tend to find that that brings a lot of people into tomato. Um, whiskey, as a lot of people know, is, it's quite an investment sometimes. Um, so to be able to find a, a, a single malt, at a great value place like that, that delivers on taste and flavor is a brilliant thing. It's a great feather in our cap to have the legacy. Extraordinary. Yes. Yep. Yep. And then I, we've even had folks that have uh, asked us saying, hey, I want to taste something with that that clear malty note to it. And your Tomatin 12 is the first time I could really with my, we were, we tried it, what, about a year in of our show. And that was the first clear time that I got the nice, clear, crisp maltiness. Well, you, know, you had, love it. you had uh, referenced maltiness a lot. When, when, when we, when we started reviewing almost five years ago, we were really new, right? But that, that was, was the, the adventure that we were on. We wanted to document us really from the right. beginning. It's the, the whiskey journey. You had referenced having a maltiness in a couple of whiskeys. Yes. I never knew what you were talking about right. until we had the Tomatin 12. Oh yeah. And all of a sudden I got it as well. I'm like, okay, now I get what yep. you're talking the about. The grassiness. The yeah. You can just pick that up and that's where the 12. And you when you make spirit, that's, the, yeah. The, the, so you have um, you've got the new mixed spirit in there. there, and the maltiness is in there. But you've also got the malted barley. So if you were to nose the little bottle of malted mm. barley there, you'll get that flavor. And uh, because it's malted, you can you can eat that if you want. Um, if you run out of cheese. Oh, well. <laughs> don't yeah, tell. Me yeah, that. I'll be like over here, like like yeah. popping them like candy. Nice little barley, it's a cube of cheese, crunchy and delicious. Two cowbells. Woo, double cowbell. Jesse, Jesse Voison, milk bones for the chupacabra. Yes, the chupacabra. And Zach Andrews, who we just met down in Texas. Thanks, Zach. Mm, love uh, Zach. Whiskey Tribe representing, he says. Great video, guys. Nice, nice to see how the virgin oak imparts great color to whiskey, yep. much like bourbon. Side note, if you want to see Zach and his wife, you can tune into the little montage we did down in Austin, and uh, Zach was interviewed. Yep. So. Mm. Yeah, that is, uh, make sure, well, I'm sure she will. Make sure Joanne tries this. Maybe you had this out before as well. Maybe, maybe she's that, had it. Yeah. I'm trying to remember um, because a, f a few years ago, we only had the bourbon and the sherry cask available. It was just the two. Uh, and they became incredibly popular, as I'm sure you can imagine. So we decided to add more and more to it. But I don't know about you guys, but with this being in the glass a little bit longer now, I'm getting a bit more toffee and caramel coming yes. through. That, that, that spiciness is starting to ease off a little bit. Yep, I agree 100%. 
Um, the flavors, again, just to echo Scott here, the flavors here are just boiling out. I mean, they just really keep coming at you. Yeah. This, the, the, the bourbon you said was cotton candy, candy floss. I mean, this one's kind of fudge. Mm. That allows me to mention the <laughs> tomato fudge that is also available in our visitor center. Reasonably priced at only £6.50. Perfect. I do in America because quite a lot of uh, tourists will come, they will look at fudge and they'll say, what, what is, what's fudge? I think it might be a vaguely rude word in the States. But uh, it's, a, it's a sort of soft caramel toffee. It's absolutely delicious. And this has a, a good dose of tomato and whiskey in it. Mm. And there's a, you can, this, this one's a good one for where you can, you can see where it ties in. You can smell a kind of fudginess. You know, I'm going to tell you, the only problem, the only problem with the five-year, the five year, year. say you say bought them bought. and you, this was on the shelf next to an 11-year-old ex-bourbon cask, Nine out of ten people would choose the the eleven year old ex bourbon cask over a five year old whiskey. You're right. But, mm -hmm. out, sitting here though now and tried them, I would. They'd if, mess if, up I, if I could only pick one bottle, this five year old's killing it. Mm. Yeah, it's it's interesting that you should mention that. You know, we as part of the tour, the biggest job we have is educating people. You know, and Ken mentioned earlier, we're going to get. A wide spectrum of people on the tour. There's going to be people that have been drinking tomato since we started releasing it, and this is almost like a pilgrimage for them. And then there's going to be other people who have been on part of a wider tour of Scotland and they want to come to a distillery. And we are possibly the first time they've ever drunk a, a single malt Scotch whiskey. So a lot of what we have to do is get past misconceptions and inform people that older isn't better, darker isn't older, you know. And the virgin oak is a great, great way of doing that and showing that the cask is really the king and it's the most important part of the, the whiskey making process. Yeah, that is very, very interesting. That's an educational process there just on exactly what Scott's saying, what you can do with your different barrels, your different yeah. woods. Mm. That is delicious. That is phenomenal. Well, I think you need to take the ratio of this that you're mixing with the ex bourbon. <laughs> you want to up it and up it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you can come and buy two bottles and mix it in your own. Mm, yeah, like the sound of that too. Yeah, he wants yeah. something. He wants like the the tomato and dummy blend is what he wants it called. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, I'll wait till we let's we'll wait till we get through the samples that we got. But when we when we talked before a year and a half ago, you guys were working on a heavily peated oh, scotch. So wow. let's we'll wait till the end and see where we're at there. But yeah, that's, so, now you're talking March language. Oh lord, we are, we are. Unfortunately, nothing that we're going to be drinking today. None of these five are peated. That's fine. That's uh, fine. But we can definitely talk about that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so um, I'm guessing probably Oloroso or PX next. I would say let's go for the PX yes. because the Pedro Jimenez that we have here, the Oloroso is fully matured, but the Pedro Jimenez cask is uh, finished. So again, if we're going on the flavor intensity, we're moving away from the, the heavily vanilla flavors and we're starting to move into those sherry notes. Beautiful, beautiful. So I, I think, I, think I heard that the PX is just finished. Is that right? Right. And that, the, is the Oloroso exclusive? Exclusive. Really matured, yeah. It's yeah. quite a long finish, though. At the moment, this is 16 years old, six of those years it's been in PX. Yeah. Wow, that so, is a long ooh. finish. You're not just talking you dump it in there for a month. Yeah, yeah. so th that's another thing that, that stands true to our core range as well and our limited releases. When we're mentioning a finish, in many ways we're talking about a double maturation. Um, nice. We just released a 15-year-old limited edition uh, that had been finished in Moscatel wine barriques. It spent five years in there, so that's a third of its life in the Moscatel casks. We're trying to explore the flavors that those casks give us rather than just having it to put a, a name on a label. Beautiful. Now, what's also cool, if Ken can pass me the bottle, we have... Um, the Moscatel? No, no, the, the Pedro Jimenez. Oh, yeah. oh the bottle. The actual... Yeah. So we actually have a few bottles of sherry here as well to show people what the sherry actually looks like and what it does. Um, this is a, an interesting one. This yeah. is a, a recipe for disaster. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that is it's like thick, thick. It's um, around about 450 grams of sugar per liter 
uh, in Pedro Jimenez wine. It smells like toffee. It, it just you could chew on it. I mean, you just it, it's like crude oil, but it wow, it, wow. It tastes nicer yeah. than crude oil. You pick up a bottle of that and pour it on your ice cream and thank mm. me later. Mm. 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 I can tell. I can tell. Ken likes the live stream, and he probably thinks we could just turn around and do one back to back. Bam, back to back. <laughs> I think this is very different from radio. <laughs> it, it's a little bit odd being seen. If I was on the radio, I'd be I'd be, I'd just need to there, like be poking my nose and <laughs> my hair and uh, all sorts of things that no one ever gets to see. One of the reasons I probably left is that webcams were starting to be introduced into the studio. I don't want people seeing me when I was talking. So Ken, Ken was a little bit modest earlier on. Ken actually worked for the number one radio station in the north of Scotland. So Ken Kelman is a, a local celebrity. So for many people tuning in, this they will have heard Ken numbers and numbers of times before, but this will be the first time seeing him. And that's why I've got the beard tonight. Uh, <laughs> that is a good that beard. Joe, so what's excellent about the beard is, uh, just to take a wee diversion, it means that you get to comb your face. <laughs> <laughs> we love that. A really unique experience, actually. You do have to now, try I'm, it. I know I've seen you on Twitter and probably Instagram as well, just people posting pictures when they're touring with Matt and Matt. Oh, right, yeah. You're the tour guide. So. I'm also the face of tomato and tea. Ooh. This is tea that has been matured for six months in a tomato whiskey barrel, and so it takes on it, it's infused you know, with the flavour of the of the whiskey. And for the photo shoot, they took a picture of me looking wizened in the uh, in the distillery in one of the warehouses, sampling a cup of tomato tea. Now, is that loose tea or is it in tea bags? It's loose this tea. is loose tea, but tea bags are also available. <laughs> okay. Good. You're trying to get me fired again, right? Yes, yes. That's all, that yep. That's all what? we're saying. What? I think actually, for the avoidance of doubt, I think the little sachets that the tea comes in are called tea pinks. Oh, really? See, that's yeah, a difference that's in the culture. Obviously, tea bag had the, you know, the terrible history, and so the name has changed. So this whiskey, what do you think? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Hold on, we got Toon Van Roo. Yep, great show, guys. Is Tomatin whiskey natural colored? So everything we're trying tonight is natural colored. Um, I think we loosely touched on it before. The only products in our single malt range that ever get a bit of coloring added would be the Legacy and 12-year-old, uh, or the Dualcus and 12-year-old. Again, they're the, the mass-marketed ones around the world. And we're still dealing with the, the misconceptions that people have about consistency and color. And there'll be times that the flavor is the same. That is the goal every time, but sometimes the color isn't the same. So we have to drop a little bit in. We're never adding uh, so much color that it looks like a, a 30 year old whiskey, but it's only three years old. That's not our end there. It's purely for consistency. Um, but as we get past the, the uh, Dualcus and 12 year old, everything's natural color. So when it comes to the, the likes of the 14, but this is a reddish color. The colors that you're actually permitted to add to whiskey don't look like that. So that cannot be an unnatural color. Uh, it's kind of pink or red because of the port casks. Love that one. Mm -hmm. That yeah. port cask finish is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. This, uh, So this PX, though, uh, just a blast of PX and burnt caramel jumping yeah. right out of the glass. Yeah. Me. So what you're sitting with there, as Ken mentioned, is around about 16 and a half years old um, and 55.7% alcohol. So the strengths come down quite a sizable amount. Still a, a, a strong whiskey. Um, but yeah, a, a lot more of those sherry notes. Um, we tend to find that Pedro Jimenez, although it's a darker, heavier style of sherry, doesn't add as much influence to the whiskey as an Oloroso does. And the only real explanation we have is because it's so much more sticky, it stays to the cask rather than imparting on the whiskey too much. Um, so that's why Oloroso is sometimes darker in color in a whiskey than Pedro Jimenez is. Um, but it's a much sweeter experience. Wow. That is very sweet. We you do have, have a, a uh, yeah. we do have a storm that's moving in. I can hear it raining outside now. So just in case really? of power, and just in case if power goes out, we may lose you guys. Okay. So yeah, is this, is this why people from Kansas end up in Oz? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
We are in the basement, though, so we're yeah, safe. We're, we're safe from the tornadoes, yeah. but not the power outage. We just got crackers, so hopefully they find us within a day or so. And I can fight for food extremely well. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen that with the cheese. Yeah, so <laughs> I have a large fella. I'd be like, yeah. that's supposed to last us a week, which I oh, was hungry. You would be like, eat the cheese and the crisp. You'd be in the corner with like a bottle saying, I'm surviving over here. Yeah. <laughs> This has, I haven't gone in yet. The nose, on, in. the nose is just, it's phenomenal. It really yes. Is a yes. Great nose. And it doesn't even feel like, and I know it's been, I think you said six years in that PX cast. So I get like jam preserves. It, 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 it feels like it's been exclusively matured in, in PX. That is a very fruity, nose. fruity nose. Wait till you taste this. <laughs> uh, it's, it's very sweet. I get a little mm. hints of raisin. A lot of the, uh, a lot of raisin, not hints of raisin. Wow. Oh my, yeah. Yes, sweet and wow. juicy. Oh, yep. And the fudge and the burnt caramel and the chocolate cake, mm. raspberry chocolate cake. Yeah, raspberry chocolate cake. Good call. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what my store did you get it from? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that, that is, is homemade. Oh my That's goodness. homemade raspberry chocolate cake. We're it, we're definitely progressing. It's gotten the ex bourbon was was good. Mm. The virgin oak really good. Right. This is yes, really. And, good. I'm and, gonna go up one more notch. Really, really good. And the finish is very chocolatey. Very yeah. very chocolatey finish. Mm -hmm. Woo! Wow. Hold on. Whiskey Wolf, formerly known as, as Abhead. Abhead, 2424. And one of the best little thumbnail pictures ever. He had one of those form-conforming pillows that he put on. <laughs> to the gentleman from Tomatin, please don't empty the bourbon cask. I'll do a drive-in fill a bottle on the 3rd of October. Ooh, he's coming to you. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. You've got a month. Ooh. Yeah. Let me just check. I'll let Ken monitor it. <laughs> He's in order to check. He's got to fill a little bit. Don't worry; it will be replaced by another yeah, ex-bourbon cask. Exactly Beautiful. Now I love I love Oloroso. Yeah. I love PX. Mm. I love port finishes. This is uh, it's delicious. Lot number fourteen, so there's going to be definitely some left in this one's time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Again, very rich in flavor. Hmm. One of each, please. Mm. Actually, two of this, one yeah. of the others. Yeah. We would go over. A great way of thinking about this one, actually, is if you think about the bourbon uh, cask that we started with, what we've really done is we've taken that whiskey and put it into a Pedro Jimenez cask for six years. So it's really incredible the influence that that cask has. Years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. You guys are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying. We're trying. Yeah. I am telling you, um, wow! This the Oloroso is. Uh, this is going to be a tough one to beat. Yep. I think we'll see. That is phenomenal. That's good coming from the peat head over here. That is. I mean, yeah, I, I was just thinking that. Yeah. Well, I like yeah. the PX cast, but sometimes not yours. But every once in a while, I'll get one that gives me a sour. It's more of a right. sour hit where this is just sweet raisin and plums. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, and I'll tell you, sometimes though, I do get with the PX, usually it's a little bit lighter. There's more of the raspberries, blueberries type. There's not so much Darker of this. Fruits. This I would I might confuse this with an Oloroso cask, actually. This is like a fruit flavor. This is explosion. a darker. Yes. A lot of chocolate, a lot right. of coffee, toffee, fudge. Mm. The raspberry chocolate cake, like we, I said. James oh. Richer. We got a more cowbell. More cowbell. He says, hey, guys, stopped over to see you for a min from Bourbon Night stream. He, he means minute. Min. I know. I just, oh. I'm, 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 <laughs> thank you for the help there. Nice meeting ya. By that, that really means you. you. I know. Meet thank you both. again. for uh, Nice meeting you both in Austin. We were just down in Austin for the Crowded Barrel uh, Distillery Open in Austin, Texas. Uh, and Bart, keep nerding it out. Boom. I love yeah. the exact shout out. I will nerd we, it out, brother. Yeah, we saw Chad and Sarah was going live at the same time. Yeah. Uh, that's that's going to happen. It. Yep. We didn't know it, but we're, we're, we're lined up with, 
with Scotland. We love well, and we love Chad and Sarah. And we love Bur wish them, yeah, it's wish them luck. luck. Sure, uh, but we're we this, just lined up with satellites. We're in a whole other part yeah, of the world. But this also opposed to the YouTube <laughs> YouTube channel. So I mean, it's available. Sure. Later. They're gonna watch it later. So, so. we're in a different time zone. Yes. Six we, hours, six we, hours difference. We encourage people to go watch Chad and Sarah because Chad yeah. is much better looking than we are. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I know you don't feel good about yourself, but I'm I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> you can have a cowbell. <laughs> yes. Did I do it? Yeah, he did. Do it again. Do it again. Chad and Sarah have a cowbell. Oh no, oh, no, no, they can't bring the cowbell. They got like one of them little ting things goes ting and that's it. No, I'm making it up. Now, James is getting you here though, Bart. Uh -oh. Say it. Read it. Uh oh, James comes in with another cowbell remarks is just to make Bart say it. Bourbon is king. Cheers. No, no, it's not. We love all Turn whiskey. The upside down. Yes. See, he knows I kind of lean toward the scotch. I lean a little bit toward the scotch. So. Mm. Bart, right, Bart's James. favorite saying is, "If I have X amount of money, I'm buying a peated scotch." That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I love the peat. I like yeah. If I'm sitting here yep. looking at dollars and cents, yeah. But we're like, well, this bottle is sixty five dollars. What do you think? Is it worth it? Well, if I got sixty five, yeah, bucks, I can I'm get an art bag, baby. I can get an art bag right there. Yeah, buy something. That's I could pick up the Tomatin fourteen, baby. Port finish. Why would, why would I buy that? I could. That doesn't have peat in it. <laughs> Have you ever tried a peated Pedro Jimenez cask? A peated PX? I'm trying to think. See, and Scott's our We've Scott's had, our memory here. Now I'll I? tell you one of the best we have. There's a peated Oloroso we have that was a 14 year wow. Port Charlotte from Single Cask Nation. Okay, that is true. Um, peated. What PX. was that? Uh, the Moñez. No, we just got uh, the, the from uh, the Buna Haben. We just got Moigne. that Moñez. And when you oh, that's at your place. That isn't my place. Was that still. PX? That might have been PX. That's both. Yeah, I can't remember if it was it was Pete and that was the Fajile exclusive yeah, the Fage, from Buna yes. So I, we're not we're not sure on that. Scott mm. Pete and PX. I don't think I've had any myself. I know we've got some on site with probably future plans. They're quite young at the moment, but um yeah, it'd be interesting to track them and see how they're doing. I've not I, I can't recall off the top of my head if i've had one myself but i think it'd be an interesting experience mm, that it would this is phenomenal uh yeah uh jason whiskey wise is pointing out the buna haben moignet px um tom r says says there's a travel retail lafroig px mm. okay yeah that was uh that was delicious i hate to see that one go wow yeah, that is something else. Now, we were talking about time before, Scott, because you talked about how we went an hour and a half last time. Mm. Yep. We're coming up on an hour and a half. Wow, and we're wow. still killing. We're still going strong. <laughs> Two to go. Anymore. Mm. Man. This would be one of those, if I bought one bottle, I'd be sad I didn't get two, and if I bought two, I'd be sad I didn't get four. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you'll have to get a box full. Oh, yeah, they'd be getting me in, uh, in customs as I came through. Like, what are you doing with 10 of these? I'm like, what? <laughs> have you tried it? <laughs> you would have 10. Yes, I'd be like, pull me into one of them side rooms, and instead of the pat down, just have a dram. And they'd be like, you're on your <laughs> way. Mm. Wow. Mm. That is delicious. Yeah, wow. I must say, it's very difficult to get whiskey over to America. So I think for this, we have to give a little shout out to Roy for bringing those sample kits over. Roy, yeah, absolutely all over it. Yeah, that was very nice and timely. And Roy, yeah, yeah, you got these to Roy. Uh, Roy was able. He came over for the Austin Grand Opening yes. down there, the Crowded Barrel, and brought these to us. Uh, you guys did him a favor as uh, well and sent him his own sample set. Yes, he needs to go live with you guys as well. Yeah, uh, probably. Uh, right after, I think Ken would appreciate it if he went live. Oh, right after double this. down with Ken. There you go. I'm going to meet Roy at the Glasgow Whiskey Festival later this year, so that'll be great. We'll have a few drums then. That'll I can see perfect. Ken. I can see Ken smiling under. Yeah, that Ken's beard. like, I like, like yeah, the way these guys talk. We need more, more. Yeah. Ken. <laughs> How much I like being on air. There you go. More Ken, more whiskey. Yeah. 
All right, I do want to cleanse a little bit. That was so yeah, fruity. Oh my lord, that wow. is delicious. Mm. Um, I mean, are, I'm anxious to see her because I know the, this this Oloroso better live up to expectations. That's well, all I'm saying. You, you yeah. shouldn't challenge it. <laughs> but that one, that PX, wow. And you're right, we got a little thunder banging yeah. around out here. Nice. We have uh, we've had some incredibly beautiful weather this summer in Scotland. So oh, that's what we've heard. Yeah, yeah. And do you have any plans to come over at all? Well, when we come over, it'll be like one of the worst, coldest times ever. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. You wait a few months. Right, right in the middle of July. Yeah, a bit <laughs> of snow for you. Yeah. It'll be like it's the hundred years. Yeah, we've never not since Napoleon has it snowed like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we say that maybe every two years. That, yeah, that last, last yes. week. We do. I mean, um, I, I know we always say it's in the plans, it's in the works. We're hoping we're getting closer. We have full time jobs. Mm -hmm. so, so we're at the kind of the a beck and call of those. Yeah. In a few years, who knows? Maybe in a in a couple of years right. we'll be I able think, to. We'll yep. see. Well, well there's an open invitation from mm -hmm. us. Beautiful. Oh, definitely. And what we'll be doing. When we do come over, now it's one thing we tested when we were down in Austin for the Crowded Barrel Distillery Open. We mic'd up. We actually spent some money that we got from our Patreon fans to get some really nice mics that work well with our camera. And that was the first time we tested it live, and the sound really worked good. I get in trouble because at one point I was tapping him a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> It worked good though, so we'll be doing that. And uh, this was this when when you weren't mic'd up and you were trying to ask questions or something. And you see, you're you're pretty much right on the topic here. I'd handed over the microphone, and I'm thinking one. I'm I'm going to admit it was like 105. We'd been yeah, at it all day. I was a little tired. He was mic'd up. I'd handed my mic to Kevin, who was giving some comments, and I'm thinking, why isn't Scott like going, uh huh, uh huh? And a couple questions. He's not saying anything. So I start doing this, boom, and he's like, "What are you hitting me for? What are you hitting me for?" <laughs> yeah, and uh, and and really, when I watch it now, there really wasn't much you could have even said. I know, other than like, uh huh. But yeah, yeah that's what that's all you were wanting. Yeah, just like a like a conversation, like Kevin. That's Absolutely. phenomenal. Say more. Excellent. Yeah, right. Wonderful. But Kevin was doing great on his yes. own. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and apparently I started. Well, not apparently. I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> comes back with bruises and a dead arm after after a small whiskey test. <laughs> right. And he's looking at me like, what do you want me to do? And I'm like, talk, man, talk. <laughs> By the way, this is one of uh, Roy's shirts. This is an Aqua Vitae shirt. And uh, I don't know if he's got them up on his site yet, but he brought a bunch of these to uh, to Austin, Texas. So look for that on uh, on his site. I'm sure you'll be seeing some of them. Well, he's in here. He's commenting. I don't know if he's got them on his site. He is. Um, I know you can email him and he's got uh, challenge coins as well. Right. Which he. Well, it's all about. It's not sold out of. Right. And, and his shirt says it's not whiskey unless it's shared. Boom. That's a great, great. But uh, uh, Roy ordered 250 coins I think and I so. think he's only got about 50 left. Yeah, he's, he's, he's shot right through yeah, them. He's but. flying right through those and they've got the same kind of sayings on it. So the whiskey of life. And again, it's, oh, hey, it's not whiskey unless it's shared. We got a, we got another cowbell, Zach Andrews. Go ahead. Glad I could be one of your test dummies. Woo, he was an awesome test dummy. Yep. Sorry, we cut you off, Scott. I was just going to say, I've got my coin here from cask one, number 198. Very nice. Oh, that is good. That's one of the OG coins. That is. There's only 200, uh, well, 200 of those out there. Five years. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, our latest, our latest release, we got 750 coins. Yeah, so cask there's, four um, on that. There's only 200 of those out there, Scott. Yeah, I think we sent, those, we sent a couple to uh, Jennifer. You did. Yeah. I think there was myself, Scott, and Jennifer. We all got one. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Okay, how, the how nose, is, the nose on the Oloroso, extremely familiar to the PX. Very fruity. It's got something different. I can't quite pull out though. Yeah, I think the the PX has a, a sweeter, almost treacly nose to it, whereas this is maybe a little bit more nutty, a little bit more tannic. I give you that. Yep. It's got a little bit of like an almond nose to it 
Wow, we're getting a lot of thunder out there. I thought the PX was actually had a little bit darker nose, which really? is reverse. Usually the Oloroso would come with a little bit darker nose. Well, that PX is definitely like a sweeter, sweeter nose to it. Yeah. And what's our ABV on this one? This one, we're back up a little bit. We're at 58.5 years. So this is 12 years fully matured in Oloroso sherry butt. Mm. Is that the That's sherry? The sherry so Ken's yeah. just poured the sherry itself. So those it's that maybe like haven't that seen mm. Oloroso before, in comparison to the Pedro Jimenez, it's a much lighter yeah. color. It's a much uh, less sweet style of sherry. It's dry it's sherry. It's 30 years to wow. produce. 30 years maturing, whereas PX is 20. Scott's having a moment over here. <laughs> <laughs> De uh, delicious as well. I'm at uh, I'm first sip, but I'm still. I think the PX was a little bit better. Of course, it's four years older, with the 16 year. A little bit more of the chocolate and the fudge was was uh, present on the. So I wouldn't say PX. better. Definitely different. It's different. nice to see that difference mm -hmm. in what's going on there. Yeah, and that's exactly the point of having these casks available. Um, the whole discussion in the single cask experiences. The history of using Scotch whiskey, of using casks in the production of Scotch whiskey, through to the impact they have, and through to how we use those. So, like you say there, to to pick out those differences, and maybe there's one you prefer and don't prefer, but they they really have a a, a point to them. Mm. So to come back to the tours, so let's say we came out and did the top level tour. We're down in that room. Do the yeah. folks that do the tour? What's the name of the top tour again? Uh, the single, single cask, cask experience. So if they do the single cask experience, do they get to come in and try samples of the different casks? So what you're doing on the single cask experience is you're trying the five casks that we've got here that we're trying tonight, and you're trying the new make spirit as well. Mm. A couple of the wash as well, if the circumstances are right. So you can taste the, the beer, basically, that we start out with. Beautiful, beautiful. Wash. So they get that, and then they get the option of coming back and actually having a bottle filled right from the cask. Well, everybody that comes to the shop can buy a bottle. You don't have to go on the tour. It's not a prerequisite. So if there's anybody that's been to the distillery before and doesn't need to go on a tour but would like a bottle, we don't we don't tell them no. So um, Well, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, so basically they get the tasting factor. Anybody can buy those cask-strength whiskeys. That's right. that's right. And at the bar here as well. Um, if, if you're not on the single cask experience, you still have the opportunity to try these whiskeys through our token bar. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, it, it, I was literally listening to Mark Gillespie's show, and he was talking about how I think your, well, number one, your sales in the U.S. market, I think were, were, were way up. And then he mentioned how your tours were just extremely successful. And immediately I thought, I've got to, I've got to get all the Jennifer and see if we can do exactly what we're doing here. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I think, you uh, so I think originally the idea was to get us on the 12 hours of boom, but looking at the time that we're running, I don't think we would have got all these whiskeys in. So uh, it's good to have a separate evening with you guys. I agree. I think, and, mm -hmm. and we're yeah. kind of learning as we go. It was an idea of the 12 hours of boom, but that's a 45 minute deal. I we're, think, I think I actually said that because you brought that up and I said, I think we need more than 45 minutes with to Matt. Well, then I'm going to say you're a smart man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you full credit because yeah, in the, in the 12 hours of boom is 12 shows, 45 minutes, 50 minute break for us. And it gets crazy. And you're right. This is the way to do it. Well, and th thanks to you guys and Jennifer as well. Does Jennifer still work there, hopefully? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she does. She does, yeah. She still very much works for us. I, I think she was like one of the first that reached she, out to us or had brought yeah. us to your attention and said, hey, look at these yep. dummies in yeah. the States. And Yeah, well, because I had emailed her just blind. I mean, she didn't know who I am. And I just said, hey, we're loving, uh, I think it was your, <laughs> what, what are you doing over there? What, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So here we're yeah. part test, one part dummy. Right. What we're working with. right. But she engaged right away. We had you guys on. We're big Tomatin fans. Now we we want to give a nod to, I believe it's your is it your the well, is it the distillery manager? Was it Ken or who was it that actually said yes to, to even doing this sampling? Um I don't think it was ever a question that it would be no. So yeah. um I think oh 
so it's Louise, the visitor center manager. So yeah. uh, for this concept, rather than just a normal tasting, we wanted to do something to bring out the visitor center. We run it past Louise and she was more than happy to have us come down. Um, we were in the boardroom last time, we're in the shop now. Uh, Beautiful. As long as the internet stays, we're gonna stay here. Beautiful. Well, thank you to Louise as well. I just now, wanted to make sure where we is, a shout out. Where is the where is that at, the boardroom from where you're currently at? Another Maybe building? You're a two minute walk away to another building. Yeah. So the, the boardroom is in our main office building um, and the visitor center is right beside our warehouse number six. Mm. Mm. It's a vast site. You, you'll see when you come to visit. Um, you could take like five, 10 minutes to walk from one end to the other, really, couldn't it? Yeah. It goes right up into the hillside. Yeah. And it's an absolutely enormous uh, site. And it's strange because it, it was the once the biggest uh, distillery in, in, in Scotland. And Inverness is 20 minutes away from here in a car. Quite a lot of people in Inverness didn't even know it was here back then. Yeah. Um, uh, they pass it every day. But Tlatton was more famous for the fact that there used to be a little chef restaurant at the side of the road. And uh, just hidden behind the restaurant is an enormous uh, distillery. Uh, mm. So we're lucky to have such a, a huge area where there's 170,000 casks, roughly, yeah. in all the different mm. warehouses. Wow. And if you come for your single cask experience tour, we don't, we don't hide anything. You see absolutely every bit of the distillery. You get very, very close to the machines to the point that we do have to warn people on the, at the start of the tour that you shouldn't just go up and lean on something because it could be scaldingly hot. Yeah. So you do have to check everything first. But you get very, very close to the stills. You get right up to so the Bart, Bart would need what? like a full body suit. A safety. You would, because you could tell no, Bart. No, 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 Outfits for people like Mark. You would have to. Just in case. You would have to dress him up like one of those dummies uh, on your t-shirt. Actual crash uh, yeah. test dummy. You're yeah. right though, because that server, you know, you'll be at a restaurant and they'll go, "This plate's extremely hot," and I'm like, "I gotta touch it." I got. Yeah. Like, ah! <laughs> as soon as someone tells you, "Don't touch that. It's very hot." You have to find out for yourself. Yeah, you're like, "This is really hot. Don't yeah. touch it." Boom! That is hot. Wow, Juan <laughs> Quintanilla. Enjoying the show. Thanks, Juan. Woo, way to go, Juan. <laughs> I think it was the but, hot plate. He liked the hot plate story. I do like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to continue on yeah. like I didn't say anything. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Oloroso, uh, delicious in its own. I'm still giving a point or two to the PX finish. Mm. That one was, uh, well, I think know, it's the age. I think it's the I 16 I think so. Years. And that one was probably the most surprising with the mm. burst of flavor. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way it just... Whew. Because even going into it, uh, I, I'm an Oloroso guy. Yes. And if you'd have said pick one blind on you would, Oloroso. You would have said Oloroso. Yeah. yeah. After and still good. Them, oh, yeah. Extremely good. Yeah, delicious. But, but, uh, what I would maybe put that down to, with it being the, the PX having the 10 years in bourbon and then six years in the PX, you still get a little bit of that distillery character coming through, that spirit character. Whereas with the Oloroso, that's a heavy influence to have for a full 12 years. You're maybe losing a little bit of the delicacy of the spirit. So you've got the new mix spirit there. And I would say you would, if you were to nose that, you would find more of those flavors in the PX than you would in the Oloroso. You want to drop, did you put a drop of water into the Oloroso? Yes. Yep, I that, did. To, me, to my mind, that brings it closer to the PX. The, the, the it did, and I really, I think, it, I think it's more the food. More of the spirit comes out. Yeah, I think it's more ex the extra four years that that PX has aged has really just yeah. increased the uh, roundness of it. All right, I've got. A, I'm a big fan of trying new make. This is a mm -hmm. clean glass. Let me try a little bit of this new make. I'll just try a little sip of yours. All right. Now Love we that. had. So you can see how clear we are with the new make. Obviously, has not been in a barrel. Uh, new, if you haven't tried new make, I, we encourage everybody to try it. It just, it brings, it shows you, we, we had had some whiskey, some younger whiskeys, and I was, I was kind of always getting the sour wood note and stuff. Once I had a white dog or the new make spirit, I realized what that was. It was the, it was a young whiskey. That was the new make still showing itself. Well, it educates you on what the wood does. And then it also gives yeah. you some of the base elements of the distillery in which yeah that what what's coming out of that distillery now we had a uh we had a sample of new make from mccarthy's which this is, is a peated 
um, American single malt. And I was like, wow, that's I love that not though. good. Well, this I get, I get a very, I get a, I loved it. Oh, I liked it. Here though, I get a very nice, like a, like a dough, like a, a yeah. doughy nose. It's that malty note. It's yeah. really malty. Uh, and we always, we talk about tomato as the softer side of the highlands. That's a soft, light, uh, yeah. new mixed spirit. That's sitting around about 70% alcohol there. And there's some nice sort of orchard fruits, that apples and pears, and some citrus notes as well. Right. Nose on that. Such a high strength. It almost melts on the mouth rather than having to swallow it. Wow. Pop yeah. a little bit on your, your hands and rub it around. It's it's great hand sanitizer. But then smell, sniff your hands after doing that. It's like walking through a farmyard just after harvest. Yeah, I love doing that too. You get those little notes. You say walking through a farmyard? Yes. That you just after they harvested the barley, the grassy farm smells. Yeah. Ah. Let me smell your Boy. hands. We don't do this usually in public. Yeah. <laughs> in public. You're right though. Yeah, it's that grass. Wow. It's that Ooh. grassy. Yeah. Fresh Boy, clean. Even on my yeah, it's like right. a hand set. I mean, that seventy percent is. But like, you wow. get that grass that's almost Ooh. like a fresh cut grass. Still there. Right. That and on strong. the second one, on the second time you come in, I get the full malt. That almost like I'm at the distillery smelling what's mm. what what the what is coming mm. off the still. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm gonna. I'll try that and do a little palate cleanse. Wow! Before and the only one we have left is the 27 year bourbon. Wow, That's that is very, that is very clean, very refreshing. It's not. There's not a, a real mm. alcohol burn. That is interesting. There's yeah. a sweetness to mm -hmm. it. Mm. That is it's education. A good starting point that we have. Say again. It's a good starting point. Wow. Very good. A lot of the sweetness does come through. See, At first, I was going to say that's one of the best white dogs I've had. Oh. And then it's that, to me, the aftertaste, that the full flavor of it kicks in, and there's a lot going on there. That and you're is, just like, wow. That is wonderful. Overpowering. That is wonderful. Mm-hmm. Boy, the maltiness is just so much in there, that grassiness. Yeah. That is good. Yeah. You know that it's not a particularly oily, heavy new mix spirit. So when we do use a sherry cask for a long period of time, the balance goes towards the sherry, uh, maybe a little bit quicker than it would with an oilier spirit going into that. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, Jason Whiskey Wise says... Uh, uh, I've got a head off, so uh, but he says thanks, Scotch the stummies, and hope to be back at Tamatin in a few months' time. Uh, nice. Thanks to Aqua Vitae uh, for moderating. He helps us out with our chats just to make sure everything stays on par. Have a great evening, all. Jason, give me a send me a little message uh, before you come, and I will meet you at the distillery if I'm about. Wonderful. Whiskey Babbler says, uh, and I don't know if I can pronounce the first one, G-U-D-E, and then Hagrom, Germany. And then he comes, McAllen Fine and Rare says, again, I don't know what G-U-D-E is, but it says Norman. I don't know what that is. I'm lost. That was a great explanation. Thank you. you. Right Thank there. you. Right there. Well, we got Germans tuning in. I'm telling you. They're good. bold. Is it good. good? Maybe it's just good. It's good. very good. Yeah. We'll go with that anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I didn't see Ken go pour. Did you go pour the 27-year-old no. bourbon Ken, Ken was pouring new make. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's, what, that's what's in this glass. I've had since the beginning of the night. So yeah, well, we and, uh, right. If anybody can see for a 27-year-old mm. um, natural color, it's really, it's not that dark. Um, I would assume, I mean, going in, it, blindly going in, I just assume after 27 Almost years. It dark as the dark as the dark, after 27 years. Mm -hmm. Just about, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, McCallum Fine and Rare says that's, that's Hessen language. <laughs> <laughs> 
So um, for being 27 years old, this has held its strength quite well. We're at 57.5% alcohol still. So you would expect that to drop down. Our uh, cask strength comes, bottling is 57.5% as well. This, so. one, this one, this is interesting, and I don't know whether I've got the science right or wrong, but when you're maturing whiskey in Scotland because it's cold and damp, the alcohol level drops over the years. And prior to this bottle, it was 55.7. It's actually gone up. And I think that's probably because we've had a really, really warm, dry summer, in which case then the, the water has evaporated quicker than the alcohol. So the level of this, this had actually dropped down a lot lower than that, but it's actually risen back up again just over the last uh, two or three months. Wow. And I, I don't know whether that's actually true science or someone wrote one of the numbers down wrong at some point in the past. <laughs> it's true. Makes sense to me. I think that's, that had, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but does that not happen with bourbon quite a lot? That through the evaporation, the alcohol strength actually increases if rather it, than it, decreases. If, it, if it's dry, yeah, I think so. Dry than, I mean, yeah. I mean, I've I've heard of that, but I don't I don't know that I've heard of it like in that because of you know the hotter like with the one summer. Well, it's been hotter and drier here, so the cask went up. Yeah, I don't know about those fluctuations. Though it's been that short. Yeah, time. I was just trying to search around for a reason why, it, but it, it, just to cover myself in case it was me that wrote it down wrong six months ago. <laughs> well, blame it, blame it on the the other Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, many. Or you've got a Bart there. A lot of things get blamed on Bart over here. Right, there we go. That's true. There I didn't go. do it. Nobody saw me do it. You can't prove anything. <laughs> Boy, the nose on this just jumps right out, right out at you. A lot of the bourbon, the, the vanilla caramel cream note. And I still get a good malty note here, too. There's the oak coming through. And there's that sort of beautiful, starting to get tropically juicy fruit in nose as well. Um, I tend to find that in our whiskeys from about 22, 23 years old, um, our best way of um, understanding it is that oxidation. Uh, style driven maturation you know after 27 years the volume of liquid in the cask has dropped down quite considerably there's a lot of oxygen in there and that interacts as well and we tend to find that in our older whiskies um we get that heavily juicy fruity flavor so like our 36 year old is big big tropical fruits so that you've got it in the background there so you'll be getting that flavor as well and that starts around about this point so that's another type of flavor coming from the maturation that's maybe not cask driven, oak driven. Wow. Yeah, those, those tropical notes are just jumping right out of the glass at you. I get a heavy dusty wood. Mmm. Mmm. Well, it just starts to take over the palate. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, the tropical is huge on that. The mango and the papaya. Right. Yep. Yep. I get a big wow. mango. I even get a little bit. I wanted to say kiwi. Mm -hmm. Sure. Go ahead. Say it. Say it. <laughs> kiwi, baby. Kiwi. <laughs> the beauty of it is, of everybody watching, with the exception of Roy, it's just us that can try it, so no one can tell you that you're wrong. <laughs> Bam. I like yeah. that. Those are rules I, I like. No idea what you think a kiwi fruit tastes like. <laughs> argue against it uh roy have you opened any of your samples are you trying them with us or are you saving them i bet you uh, he's possibly saving. for i don't know if he was going to hit you up scott to try yeah, to get you he, on as well he should or do a show do. with you guys i don't know if he's opened it up we'll see in the comments here and we'll blurt it out when we see it we're getting tons, and he tons might, of thumbs up here he might not have known that underneath that first layer Ooh, i didn't know that models. was a secret yeah. yes yeah that I was really worried about that. I saw Scott put out a little teaser that we were going live today and mentioned that we were trying four whiskeys. So I was like, no, no, we're trying five. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Love yeah. it. We maybe need to put a little instruction manual out with these kids. In there saying, no, well, I like that little secret component. We had, uh, so we, we had two kits and they were wrapped in bubble wrap. Yeah. But I had seen in your email where you had mentioned water and the malted barley mm. and stuff. So I thought, well, maybe one of these kits is the whiskeys, and then the other is the water, the new make, the malted barley. 
So when I got home, I unwrapped them and I was like, no, they're both whiskeys. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, wrong. Yeah. Which I was like, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had one yeah. whiskey and then, but no, it's oh, two. Oh, then you go in there. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, well, Welsh Toro says horrible confession at this point. I've never had a bottle of tomato. Welsh Toro, go out and rectify that situation. Yeah, we, we will forgive you for uh, for that as long as you go and buy one and enjoy it. Yes, just enjoy it. I'm telling you, it's really, really taken off in the states. Should I don't know. Um... And no offense attended here, maybe hopefully you don't take it, but Compass Box uses a lot of Klein Leash, and Klein yep. Leash brings those tropical notes. And I, I almost blind, I would think this was a Klein Leash. I mean, is that, would you agree? Do you, is that, do you think similar? Uh, I think Klein Leash tends to be a waxier, oilier style of body of whiskey, but the flavor is certainly right. You know, right. there's other distilleries that, again, I think this is a factor of age and oxidation. I don't think you get this in a young anything, really. I don't think if you had a young Klein Leash, you'd get those tropical fruits. But, you know, if you try some like um, older Ben Riechs or things like that, some older Buna Havens, they have those tropical fruits as well. Um, so yeah, no, we absolutely don't take offense to that. It's a, a flavor that we're looking for, and it doesn't surprise me that other distilleries look for it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Well, you, there, with some of the limited compass box bottlings, you do get that heavily driven tropical fruit flavor. So you guys have so there. I mean, there's another business opportunity there. When they run out of Klein Leash, <laughs> you can offer up the Tomatin, the 27 year bourbon. We're not giving this away to anybody. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I love it. That is, boy, that is very good. It's so rich and so sweet and so tropical. Yeah, going back to it as well. After once I've got over the tropical fruit flavors, there's like a a cracked black pepper almost uh, in the background. I don't know if I'm getting that. Mm. Mm. I do need to add a drop of water, which I haven't mm. done yet. I'll do that too. Mm. Thanks, sir. And you said this was 57%? 57.5, yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. All, all of these have hidden the, the ABV really oh, well. Very smooth, very yeah. smooth. And I, I agree, uh, either you or Ken that said, you know, you could sit down on the tour and you try all five of them and you think it's hidden and you stand up and you're like, mm. wow, oh, that is. What happened? When you breeze, but you don't, you don't taste the strength. Yeah. Yeah, drinking responsibly can be quite dangerous at times. <laughs> Cash, <laughs> strength will sneak up on you. Yeah, it'd be difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, delicious. Oh, well, that was great. Thank you for the, for the sample pack, definitely. So here's a question from Travis H. Um, knowing that you guys work for Tomatin, and if you can't answer, fine, but what is these fellas' favorite scotch besides their own Tomatin product? Are you guys uh, able to just expand on maybe yeah, number so two? I think after the – in the last uh, – Tasting that we did together, I think Scott Fraser reeled off about thirty-five different distilleries that he enjoys whiskey from. So, <laughs> I, yeah, loaded question. What am I enjoying at the moment? That's probably a good a good way of looking at it. Um, I have. Oh, I tried recently, actually, at a whiskey festival down the road in Edinburgh, a Glen Turret thirty-year-old. Uh, that really surprised me. I, I hadn't tried much from Glen Turret before. Really, really nice whiskey. Um, maybe more at the more affordable end, something like, um, yeah, I, tr I tried a, was it a Glen Cadden, a 13 year old maybe? Uh, pretty recently. Again, stunning, stunning whiskey. So there's my two for tonight. Yeah, I'm kind of boring. I quite like Glen Fiddick. And I, there's like, I have a kind of, well, I like to claim a family connection. Um, nothing to do with the Grant family, but my dad's from Dufton. So uh, he came, he grew up in the town where Glenfiddich whiskey comes from. And in fact, where, you know, seven or something different malt distilleries come from. Yeah. Used to go up there um, to visit my grand. I remember one time at the uh, Mortlach distillery, uh, we went fishing for trout in the river outside. 
and uh, one of the guys came along. But uh, if you speak with a local accent, then people just ignore the fact that you shouldn't be fishing for trout in their exclusive mm -hmm. private barn. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I like, I like, I, I feel an affinity with Dufton. So Dufton whiskeys are the ones that I would. Pick. Beautiful, yeah. wonderful. I like, I love, I love sherried scotches. That, um, yeah. that, that, that yeah. that's what I would say is my favorite genre of whiskey. Mm -hmm. Sherried scotches. Bart would say peated scotches. As far as uh, both of you, what's your favorite profile of whiskey? What's your favorite genre? I like, I like the Oloroso one there. Just the, out of these ones, yeah. So Sherry, well, I, would, I would agree with you on, on that one. I would yeah. say of what we've tried tonight, I would tend to stick more towards the bourbon. Uh, I like... Not not necessarily what we tried tonight. Overall, what's your own yeah. personal so would, favorite genre of whiskey? Generally say a non-peated whiskey... It's light but loaded with fruit uh, and probably bourbon cask or, or second fill bourbon cask get a lot of that spirit character through. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that I don't like other styles of whiskey. It's sure. just five, nine out of ten times, that's probably what I'll go on for. Sure. Yeah. It's like me. I love, love peated whiskey, but that doesn't mean I turn you know blind eye to all the other beautiful mm -hmm. whiskeys out there. Give you a different another one now. Yeah. But if you had sixty dollars, what are you gonna buy? Peated baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what's, that was behind you, just behind your um Bart's right shoulder there. There's a, a a bottle with the word P on it. I take it that actually says Pete. Which one? Oh, let me see. Uh, just right in the middle. Yeah, it's just got the we word did, P on it. We did some sixteen bottle peated shootouts, and so yeah. we had four yeah. ounce samples of each bottle that uh, were blind. Uh, all right. That I was that is all the um, the leftovers of that shootout mixed together. Yeah, it's like a legacy bottle with our bumper sticker that says "Make America Peat It Again." Ah, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's cool. In the current yeah. climate, that's not a bad statement. <laughs> yes, um, yes, make America Peat It Again, baby. So have you guys have you guys done much at all with like infinity bottles or anything? Have you tried that yet? You know, we really, we haven't. We have not. The closest we've done would be when we've done these 18 bottle shootouts. 16. 16 bottle shoot. Man, that must have been a dream I had that it was 18. <laughs> How well, can we make it better? Always working on improvements. You're yeah. right. They had to be divisible by four. So you're right. It's a 16 bottle shoot. That's the new make that's finally taken effect. <laughs> Uh, 16 bottle shootouts and when we were done with those sample bottles we poured them all into like their own individual 16 bottle legacies of those and we did three peated shootouts where we saved those and this summer or no this winter in December what? we're doing a make a mer or no a merry sherry christmas yeah sorry i fell back on our slogan there we did uh, just to go back real quick to the peated shoot because bart loves peat we did a 16 bottle blind peat shootout. Blind, baby. We had a lot of people, and that was called uh, March Peat Madness. Right. We had a lot of people point out and said, Hey, you left this bottle out. You left this bottle out. Mm -hmm. We actually came up with a second 16 bottle Boom. peated blind shootout. Right. Called um, The Peat Strikes Back. Also known as Bart is in Heaven. So <laughs> we, could, we took the best bottles that we the advanced winners. blindly. Right from March Peat Madness. We mm -hmm. took the best bottles from brought March Peat or uh, Make America or the Peat Strikes Back. I'm letting you go. We combined them, the best of the best, and in a third a final. bracket Yeah, that was Make America Peat It Again. That put me in Nirvana. And we, I mean, we had Octomores mm -hmm. in there. We had yeah. Dark Cove. We mm. had uh, Grooves. We this had is where I picked up a nickname. They started, instead of just Bart, they started calling me Bart Bag. So, <laughs> great, hey, that's a great lead-in. Let's talk yes. about Tomat and Pete. Mm, yeah. um, we and we've had a few questions come in about a heavily peated Tomatin or the Kuboken right. plans. <laughs> what, what's going on? I guess this is a natural follow-on from where we left up on the last conversation um, because we were talking about Kuboken and the way we're developing Kuboken and making releases. And the question that came through is. Do you guys have any plans to release a more heavily peated uh, version of Kubokan? And our response to you at that time was that we've been playing about with more heavily peated barley. Um, so the barley's gone up to 35, 37 ppm over the last few years. Now, what has happened actually, quite interestingly, is that the spirit that's come off isn't massively heavily peated like you would expect. 
we, through our distillation, because of our size of stills and where we take the cut and the run, we lose a lot of phenols. Um, mm. They don't tend to stick through. So we're playing now with the cut points a little bit more. This year, our peated run is going to go from two weeks to four weeks. So we're going to play about a little bit more, take the cut of the run maybe a little bit later to drive some more peated whiskies through there. Um, on the side of that, we are, at the moment, we, we're doing a lot of really exciting things with Kubokin, and over the next year, there's going to be some really exciting things come out. So I can't say too much about it at the moment, but as always, watch this space. Um, and I've been sampling some of the casks that have been coming through, and I tried um, a 2014, so it just turned three years old. Um, and from that year, the peak content was 35 ppm. And this was matured in a European virgin oak cask. And I can't describe how much smoke was in it. It was much more than we've had in any other spirit that we've uh, we've produced so far. So we do have th that spirit that we were talking about a year and a half ago is now developing into pretty interesting whiskey. Um, and we're, we're playing about with that. And we're still always playing about with what we're producing as well. So again, watch this space is what I'll say. Beautiful. And then a question for Ken. Ken, what would you say is the the most distinctive thing about a Tomatin distillery tour? Just, ooh, ah, no. Yes. Ooh. Thank you, Howard, impression there. It's just for any <laughs> British viewers. Uh, we have uh, a mash tun that we've uh, carefully disassembled. We've taken the side off of it, and you can go right inside the mash tun. And uh, you can stand inside it, you can touch all the bits inside it, so you can see exactly uh, what it's like. So you don't you don't get to see that, I don't think, in any no. any other Scottish distillery, as I like to say, no one else has been brave or stupid enough to cut a gaping hole in a very important machine. Yeah. Uh, we did keep the bit of metal, we could put it back, we could put it back if we needed to. But yeah, you get you it's it's the it's the closeness that you get to the equipment. You get to touch the equipment and even there you get to go inside the equipment. And you get um, all of the guys are very, very um, well versed in the process of making whiskey. You can ask them anything at all. And uh, if they don't know, they'll make up the answer. <laughs> they'll, uh, <laughs> they'll be able to answer almost any question you have and any question that, they, that, that anyone can't answer, we will find out for you. Uh, so it, it, it's a very, very interactive tour. And especially if you come on the single cask experience tour, we've limited it to, I think it's eight people. So uh, you're, you've got a, a real sort of one-on-one -on -one with the guide. It's two and a half hours long, so you've plenty of time to take your time as you go around and, and ask as many questions as you want. We, we thrive on being asked difficult questions. From a tour point of view, I've always described to Matt and as being half a working distillery and half a museum. Mm. We went from being the biggest distillery in Scotland in the 70s to now producing about 2 million litres of alcohol. So we've got a lot of machinery that we don't use like the mash tun that we've cut open, like a condenser that you can look inside to really see, like we've done with our products, we've tried to be educational. So our tours are very education driven and showing people things that they won't necessarily see elsewhere, which is really interesting. And to Ken's point, the tour guides don't have a script here. They get given the facts and figures, um, but really you get, you get a personal experience, um, which is unlike anything that I've really seen at many distilleries. We talk to people, we don't talk at them. Yeah, love it. Your slogan for the, for the tour. That's perfect. So someone is it. is there right there where you're at now. We're and we're at the hour and a half mark, so I think we need to wrap it. Yeah, up. Yeah, we'll get ready to wrap up. That's beautiful but, information. So someone's in your distillery right there in the visitor center, and they want the single bottle of the PX sure. Pedro Jimenez mm, Sherry. It's a good bottle. Can you show yeah. us what, yeah. how did they get that bottle? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ken, we'll take you through that. I will try and angle the camera so he can show yeah. you a bit better. We give them a, a small kit consisting of a very attractive box, um, a cork. Can you see that all right? Do you want me yes. to No, it's perfect, perfect. And a label and a 70 centiliter bottle, which uh, he actually want, and we fill it directly from the cast. So we'll fill one here just now. What if they wanted American sizes and wanted the 75? What? You'd, have bring, you'd have to bring your own bottle for that. <laughs> See, he wants more and more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's just greed. No. Yes. yes. Well, I well, love Ken. This is actually, I, this is probably quite low in this cask. Actually. 
uh, open another one perhaps, so it's filling up quite slowly. But uh, once the, the whiskey is full, you fill that up for yourself. The crucial point is that when you're filling it for yourself, um, the, the little tap works from uh, moving it in a clockwise direction when you're opening it. I always tell people that when you get close to the end of the cask, you sort of close it a little bit. And the number of people that have it sort of halfway open, it gets halfway up the neck here and, and you just get into a sort of blind panic and you forget which direction you turn it to close it. So they open it fully instead and it all goes on the floor here. Mm. Uh, but uh, luckily we have trained individuals who are, are willing to go down onto the floor on their hands and knees and... Uh, <laughs> That'd be me. Yeah, yes. I'd be right there. There we go. That's cask uh, bottle full. And we take the, the stopper. Put the stopper in that. And oh, there we go. And we've got a, we'll write the label out and we'll, we'll write that on it. And uh, would you like us to send you this one or? Oh my. Yeah. Would be like you to send us that one. Hello. I think we will probably have to deal with all the how do we get a bottle of whiskey to America, to America, but we'll we'll figure out a way. We will figure that out. Wow. That is, I mean, just next time Mr. Trump visits, we'll give it to him and get him to bring it back to you. That he would. He would. Nice. He would. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. For you. Um, yeah. I mean, just seeing that and knowing how that goes. So you're at the. You pick out the bottle. You fill it. Fill it up. Pick your cask. Label. So we call it. We call it, we call it bottle your own. Uh, I got to emphasize you don't have to bring your own bottle. Sure. Fact, you know, sure. We provide have that. bottles provided. But there are a, a number of people come in and they'll say, like, I'd like to bottle, to bottle your own whiskey, but I, I don't have a bottle. Yeah. Um, you, we, we, we provide the bottle. And then important. what we'll get you to do as well is we would get you to fill in the label so you write the date that it was bottled as well um, and the, the strength at the bottling date and things like that. So. Uh, and then that gets recorded in a ledger um, because for tax purposes we have to keep a record of everything that's gone in and out. So this one, this is the second of September, isn't it? Yeah. Do you want me to get two nine on it or nine two? You do it your way. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I'll put uh, two nine eight. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. I always thought the European way of of dating was better than ours. Because you would go from the day, the month, the year. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It, it makes sense. It makes sense to either do it that way or do it 1892. Right. But, yeah, month, day doesn't, to my mind, make sense. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> Everyone at the Western Hemisphere. I, I think I told my, uh, my elementary school teacher that, and I got hit with a ruler. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you smart aleck, clack. <laughs> Hey, let's uh, let's wrap it up and thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for allowing us to get these samples. Delicious, and uh, and Roy points out that he knows a mule. Oh, mule! So, oh. well, and anybody you've got, I mean, just I hope this displays. I want to go tour to Matton. I can't wait when yes. we get over to Scotland. We must tour. I'm so intrigued just by the process you've described. Great. Oh, I should also mention, also available, whiskey cake. Ooh, I actually love whiskey yes. cake. I'm over uh, Yeah, Anything food, I'm buying the fudge and the cake, baby. Uh, delicious. <laughs> so he's, my, he's like, yeah, but he's, are, am I lying, though? No. No, I, <laughs> tore, up, I tore up some whiskey cake on a show yeah. once. He was like, are you going to leave any of that for me? I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we're supposed to be reviewing whiskey. I'm here. having a dessert. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the in there. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks guys for your, for joining us live. Thanks for having yeah, us. Cheers, guys. Lot. Ken, great to meet you, Scott. Good to see you again. Let's close yeah. it out. Yep. You guys hang on here. We're gonna stop the live broadcast, but we'll hang on. And uh we're still left we're even. still live. I'm, I know well, no, we drained gotta, it all. Oh, do the closing oh sorry, I got all confused. Scotch it, you scotch gods. <laughs> Dummies. Dummies. Wow, the whole signature sign.